Hello everybody, welcome back to DJ Spain Plays. This is DJ Spain bringing you a League of Legends Champion review. Going to be a little bit newer style video and uh, depending how it goes, I might do this for quite a few of the new champions that come out and maybe some older ones. Let's get started. We're talking about Talia, the Stone Reaver. I've had some practice with her over the past what week or so that she's been out and uh, I just want to share with you some of my thoughts, tips and tricks, runes, masteries, items, pros, cons, and then we're going to wrap it up with a final score and uh, break her down into several different categories, what she excels at, what she's not too good at, and what she can bring to the team. So without further ado, we're going to start out talking about her abilities. Let's begin. All right, first up we have her passive called Rock Surfing. Kind of like a little Silver Surfer animation there. Basically, when you're out of combat for a certain amount of time, you're going to build some extra movement speed whenever you walk next to walls, and eventually you hop on your little rock surfboard and you take off. As you'll notice, uh, you know, you move farther away from the wall and it goes away. Um, you can move from wall to wall in certain places in the jungle if they're close enough to each other. But as you can see, the range isn't that great. And again, this is only an out of combat uh, passive. You're not going to be able to take advantage of this move speed in the middle of a team fight. All right, let's move on to her Q, Threaded Volley. Uh, you cast Threaded Volley and you rip up the ground around you in a circle around your champion and you fire that ground at your target or wherever you've aimed, moving around freely as it fires up to five stone shards. Um, when you cast that, you do create this worked ground around you that basically makes it uh, your passive activates. When you walk on that thre thre worked ground, you uh, gain movement speed and also further cues if, you if you're standing in that worked ground circle and you cast another Q, instead of five shards you will only fire one, however the half of the cost of the ability will be refunded to you as mana, so again uh, this ability in lane you kind of want to spread out these worked ground areas so you're not limiting your damage output. Next up we've got our debut Seismic Shove! You cast it once in a target location, you create this small little AoE circle and after a brief delay you do a little knock up. Uh, you can activate it a second time, kind of like, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Rumble's ultimate. You can kind of, you know, move a direction or you click twice to activate the ability. Uh, and essentially after the second click, you're deciding what direction you're going to toss them. So instead of just knocking them straight up, you can knock them any direction you would like with the second click on there. Uh, and remember, this is going to work uh, with the upcoming ability E. You can throw uh, enemies into your E and uh, do extra damage as well. Moving on to her E, Unraveled Earth. Uh, you scatter boulders onto the ground in front of you in a little kind of cone. Opponents who dash through, uh, opponents that are in that area take damage. Opponents that in the next few seconds dash through that area take an additional damage. And after a few seconds, any rocks that are remaining that haven't been dashed through uh, will explode and do damage as well. So technically you can do damage three times with this. Once when you cast it on them, again if they dash or you use your W ability to throw them through your rocks. And then the third time is if they happen to be standing on any remaining rocks, those will explode as well. Very nice ability, very great for zoning. Uh, it'll come up in a few combos later on. And finally, we've got her ultimate, Weaver's Wall. It is a non-damage ultimate, purely for mobility and control. Uh, you briefly channel before summoning a massive wall of spiraling rock that tears through the rift in a target direction. You can reactivate Weaver's Wall while channeling to ride atop the wall as it emerges. Kind of like a little buck and bronco, you jump on there and you ride it all the way into the, into the enemies. Um, taking damage or moving at all uh, in any direction will cut your ride short and you jump off the wall. This ability is made for traversing the map, splitting up teams during a team fight, um, you know, really anything. It's not very great for escaping because any damage will knock you off the wall. A little weird ability to use, um, so get used to it uh, in a few games before you try to take her into the ranked scene. All right, moving on to runes, masteries, and items. We've got the runes up there. 18-12-0 is what I do. Uh, I get the, I forget what it's called, but basically the ability that does a little bit of extra damage anytime you damage an opponent with an ability. Um, after playing around with her, I do see probably Thunderlords in the Cunning Tree being a lot better fit for her uh, because you just hit a few shards of your Q and away you go. And to me, Masteries is all about personal style. Um, same with Runes, uh, which will be here. You can see that right there. We've got Ability Power, Health, and uh, Armor and Magic Pen. That's just kind of my standard AP mid. I uh, get a little bit of Armor and Magic Pen. 
Um, as far as uh, health, you want to be a little bit uh, healthy, especially with a squishy champion such as this. And then finally, the items that I kind of like to build into. Um, you can see here, Rod of Ages is great. Um, Riley's Crystal Scepter is probably needed <laughs> just because you know you don't have really a lot of crowd control or escape. Um, Landers Torment is great, especially in combined with the Rylai's. Um, Sork Boots, obviously, you want to be doing more damage. And then we've got Luden's Echo and Death Cap on there for your damage, just to get that AP rocking. And Luden's Echo is pretty good. As far as the first item, I'd go Rod of Ages, maybe into a Rylai's and then a Rabadon's. Um, but again, you know, all these runes, masteries, and items are up to you. This is just a little guideline. All right, moving on. We've got a few tips and tricks for Talia of what I've learned and what I've seen from other people playing her. Um, just a few quick tips. Her Q is great for harass, as I mentioned earlier, but it creates that worked ground and lowers any further damage. So what you'll want to do is just you know make sure you're off to the side before you cast it. Um, if you keep casting it while you're in the middle of the lane, you're going to have a hard time getting that extra damage out when you need it. So try to walk as far to the edge as you can without really telegraphing what you're going to do. Throw that Q out. Uh, but again, the bonus from that worked round is you do get a move speed buff. So you know you kind of have to weigh the risk rewards there. Um, also, her E is great for zoning melee champions and some ranged. In my games, I noticed if I was against a melee champ, I just throw that down on the wave or pass the wave, and um, your enemy at first may not respect it, so you use your W to push them into it a few times and do a bunch of damage, and from then on out, they're going to stay away from your, your rock minefield. Always try to combo your W into your E for maximum damage. Um, your W is not do a lot of damage on its own. Uh, in fact, the most damage in your kit does come from people dashing through multiple rocks in your E ability. So make sure that whenever you have the rocks down, you're really looking for who can I toss into this pile of rocks and just blow their face off. Uh, and finally, your R. I mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again. It is not great at immediate escapes. This champion's mobility is not that great um, in combat. Out of combat, best mobility uh, you know, matches some of the best mobility champs out there. But uh, in combat, very terrible. So plan ahead. Make sure you know if you're going to need your wall to get out of there, you're going to give yourself some time, maybe head into a bush first. But uh, yeah, All right, your ultimate is not for escaping out of fights. Moving on to Talia's pros and cons. Talia is a decent range harasser. With three S's there, I just noticed that, but I'm going to leave it because I'm lazy. Uh, she can throw her Q out, shoot up to five shards if you're on unworked ground. If you've already got work ground, it's kind of a useless Q unless you're last hitting minions. But on unworked ground, her Q can do a decent amount of damage to enemies. Um, her E, it's alright, you need to get pretty close, but her Q is main, main, her main form of harass. She does get move speed from her passive and her Q. Uh, the Q's passive, obviously, on worked ground, you get move speed even in combat, but the her... T passive overall is only out of combat. Um, so in combat, not the greatest, but out, out of combat you can get back to lane faster, you can get to you know top or bottom lane if you're playing her mid to help out with a gank faster as long as you stick next to those walls. So that's pretty good. She does have surprising burst combo with her E and W. You throw it on that minefield and then you shove them into it. Uh, a lot of enemies I faced in my early games of Talia didn't really respect that damage, and I did it to them a few times before they kind of realized that they should not be anywhere near those rocks when I am around. Um, her W can help escape in a pinch. It's not the biggest of knockbacks, but it's there. Um, it's a very small AoE. Uh, so again, she's not the best escaper, but she does have a little bit of a, a knockback, kind of like uh, Valkaz, things like that. Her ultimate, her R, can get you where you want to go quickly as long as you're out of combat when you're starting it. Um, you can get into a fight, you can split up a team fight with it, you can get to a buff, you can, you know, the example they gave in the spotlight is you push mid tower with your team and then as you're going back you get the red buff and then you ult to the blue buff, stuff like that. If you're actually being chased in combat, it's not going to help you out very much because uh, one hit from any enemy will knock you off that wall. Uh, her cons, she does need to be close to use all her abilities except for her Q, and even the Q isn't the longest of range, not like a Lux Q or things like that, but um, your E, definitely you need to be close, your W, you need to be close, um, so be careful with that. She does rely heavily on Rylai's passive slow. Once you get it, you're amazing at just slowing the team down and, and just putting constant damage, sustained damage over time on them, but until you get to that Rylai, it's really hard to keep up with them and, and make sure you're in a safe uh, position and you're not going to get jumped on. So that Rylize is very, very needed, very heavily needed. Her ultimate is pretty difficult to use correctly. You know, uh, it does going to take some practice to find out what you can and can't do with it. Um, enemies can flash over it, jump over it, things like that, so you need to be mindful of that. 
so just practice it with a bunch. I'm still kind of getting used to it myself. And finally, just kind of a personal option feeling, I guess. She's not as epic as previous champions have been. Aurelian Soul, I haven't done a video on him, but just looking at him, he's freaking epic. His kit's really unique. You know, champions coming up to Talia have been pretty amazing. And then Talia's kind of a kind of a back to basics almost. Just a, I could see her being one of the first champions released. Uh, just because it's, she's not very unique or inventive, I guess. And here we come to the end of the video, the final scores. I've decided to break up uh, League of Legends champion reviews into what I believe are six roles uh, that really define a character and help you decide where that character is going to fit. Laning, dueling, burst damage, sustained damage, mobility, and team fighting. So let's go through it. Talia's laning, B. Um, it's safe enough if you're playing conservatively. She's not really going to get in your opponent's face. She's more of kind of back off, poke with your Q, maybe go in for a kill. Last hitting, she's great at last hitting. She's got a lot of abilities to clean up the wave. And her auto attack's pretty decent. Um, dueling, I gave her a C. Uh, it's going to rely a lot on your skill shots and the opponent's ability to dodge said skill shots. Um, she doesn't have any abilities that you just click on an opponent and do damage. Her ultimate doesn't do damage. So as far as dueling, it's going to be outplaying, um, not just straight up damage. Her burst damage, I gave her a D. Uh, now I said that EW combo is pretty good, but again, it's you know you're not going to go 100 to zero on someone. You're going to go 100 to 70, and then 70 to 50, and then 50, you know you're going to do do it in increments. Moving on to sustained damage, I gave her a B. Um, you can continue to throw out those Qs. Her E sits on the ground for a while that you can toss enemies into with your W. Um, so staying, she's pretty good. I gave her a B there. Mobility, I gave her a C. Um, you know, a lot of people are saying she's got crazy mobility. She can run around fast. Her ultimate, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when do you really want mobility in a team fight? You want mobility to get away from skill shots, to catch up to enemies, and her mobility is all out of team fight, out of combat. Uh, and then finally, team fighting, I gave her a B. Um, in the right hands, you can do some great zoning. Um, you can split team fights up in half, which is amazing, unless characters have jumps. More often than not, I kind of mess things up by throwing my ultimate into the middle of team fights, but if you're good at it, you can really help out like a good Anivia while could. Um, she's got the damage, um, she's got the safety, you can kind of stay in the back. If someone tries to jump on you, you do have a few things you can do to try to get out of there. Um, overall, I'm not going to give her a final altogether score because there are a lot of different categories there, but I will say that uh, if you're looking for someone who's got a pretty safe laning phase, she's got some good sustained damage and can make uh, an effect in late game team fights, Talia is your champion. Um, otherwise, meh. Uh, and uh, as far as my final words on Talia, I will say that um, I w probably would refund her <laughs> if I had refunds left. I didn't really enjoy the character too much, but some of you might. Um, I do really enjoy this type of character as far as ranged mages, but again, there was really nothing in her kit or her design that just really stood out to me as being amazing, and why would I pick this character over any other of my favorites? So there you go. There's my first... League of Legends Champion Review, what did you think of it? Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, uh, let me know what you thought, other champions you'd like to see me review, things as a review you'd like to see maybe a little differently. Um, spent quite a bit of time on this video and I really enjoyed doing it and I hope you enjoyed watching it as well. Till next time, thanks for watching, bye bye.